So I'm, I'm like, ever since I was invited to this, I was super excited. This is something I've never done. So I'll just do what I do on my, in my concerts generally. Can I get some hands up in the air, guys? Yeah? All right. <laughs> you, guys are, you, guys, you guys are amazing, man. I mean, uh, so I've, ever since I was invited to this, I was looking forward to coming here and talking uh, about myself and about like the future of India, which is all of us, right? Everyone over here. So uh, I thought that, you know, I should give it a go and uh, talk to you guys about my journey, how I've uh, overcome my fears, how I've overcome my own journey here, uh, to come till here, like, you know, uh, I'll do my best to give my insights to you people. So uh, my journey started, I mean, uh, I believe in one thing, it's very important to me, there's no plan B, according to me. Uh, I feel if you've really thought of something to do, like if you've really thought of something, like, you know, this is what you really want to do, this is why you're unique, I think everyone over here is unique in their own way or the other. I mean, not everyone is a singer or an artist or whatever. Some person might have patience, someone might have confidence, someone might have like uh, insane genetics, right? I mean, so uh, you just have to realize yourself, understand where you're coming from. And uh, I feel, uh, for me, it was singing. And uh, from a very young age, ever since I was, what, 10 or 12 years old or so, I had started to sing, I started to uh, pick up difficult uh, melodies, like, you know, Children my age at that time were not being able to do it, but I just thought to myself that uh, maybe singing is not a realistic career at that time. I, I thought like, you know, maybe it's not something that I'm, I should go up to my dad and just go and tell him that uh, uh, I, I want to be a singer, this, that. You know, it was not easy. I belong to a business background, so it was not an easy task for me to go up to my dad and uh, say, Dad, I want to be a singer. So it started like that, but then, however, uh, I started a band in school with a few of my friends. Uh, I thought this is the way, I was not even a singer in the band, I was a guitarist and uh, I thought maybe, yeah, I mean, let's see how it goes and after a point of time, if things work out, if things are written for me, it's going to go there, like, you know, let's give it a shot. But the band disbanded uh, in like two years or so and uh, I was a little disappointed, I was dejected on, honestly because I was really driving this band forward and I honestly thought that uh, maybe it's not written for me, it's not going to happen. I was really disappointed, it was a really low point in my life. And uh, I thought like, yeah, but uh, since I'm a sports, I was a sports person as well. As you can see, I'm a huge Lewis Hamilton fan. So I, 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 I'm wearing the cap as well right now. I look up to him a lot. And uh, he's a fighter. I think that's something like I really, uh, he's having a really tough time in the form, if you guys are following Formula One right now. But he's still fighting, he's not given up. And uh, that's something I really look, look up to. And uh, so I, I honestly, f uh, hello, yeah. I did sport management as sport was my passion as well. I wanted to be a sport agent. I thought I could motivate people. I could like talk to people. I could uh, understand personalities, and uh, I could understand talent. I had a bit. I thought I had an eye for talent as well. But honestly, I came back. But whilst I was in Cardiff, I was performing as well. I didn't quit music completely, and uh, I was just taking my guitar out, going out there, like going to pubs, going to really small places here and there, and performing in Cardiff whilst I was there, and even London, some places in London. So people had started to come and watch me sing. That started to happen in the UK. And uh, they were really allotting me. They were enjoying my voice. They were saying, like, you have a very different voice and everything. But still, uh, that plan it didn't s stick to me yet. I mean, I did not think that I should be a singer. It was still, like, not a realistic thing. Like, you know, I, I, I belong to a business background. So honestly speaking, it was not easy for me to think like that as well at that time. But I felt that, OK, maybe let's see. Let's see how things go. And uh, I finished my sport management, and once I was done with that, I came back to India. I was still not listening to my heart. I was not listening to what my plan A was, you know. It was always there. I always wanted to be a musician. That somewhere down the line, somewhere in my mind, I always wanted to be that. So it's really important. The mo whenever you guys make like a plan A, if you have like that, that, that one plan that you guys really feel that this is you, and like, you know, nothing should exploit you, nothing should influence you, I feel. A lot of people did that with me as well. Like, honestly, uh, when I was done in my course, I came back and uh, I did a few jobs. I worked in Delhi, I worked in Bombay, and worked in Kolkata, where I stay, and in, in sport management firms. But honestly, nothing was taking me towards where I wanted to go. And uh, I just felt that it's not working out. Then I took the easier route. I still did not really feel that, you know, the plan A should be, like, I should execute it now, right? So I worked for my dad's uh, company and uh, for a year. But then suddenly I started feeling like, you know, it's, this is, I mean, this is not me. I was not feeling like myself. I felt that this is not me. 
And uh, if I really want to get somewhere in life, I think I have to dig deep inside. I have to understand what I am made of, what I am good at. I was always, this was me, I was always a singer, songwriter. I was not a songwriter, I became a songwriter later. But uh, I was a singer, it came naturally to me. So I thought I should give it a go now. So I go up to my father and I tell him that, you know, Dad, I've, with a lot of courage, right? I mean, I can't see any one of you because of the spotlight, but like, I would love to. But <laughs> the thing is, uh, I'd gone up to him and I told him that, you know, I want to be a singer, I want to be a performer, I want to be a live performer, and that's, that's what I really want to do. And initially, he was a little reluctant. He was not very easy going about it. He was like, you know, why? I mean, why do you want to do this? You have a business, you have something to fall back on, things like that, right? But I feel there's, there should not be anything to fall back on. I think you should know exactly what you're doing. If you've thought of something, if you have something in your mind, if you've retrospected, if you've really given a deep amount of thought, right? So you should stick with it. You should not falter no one. I mean, during my time as well, honestly, when I started off, when I was performing, when I started performing, I was doing a lot of small shows here and there as well. You have to start small. I started with 20 people, 30 people, odd, like, you know. And, uh, but they were having a good time. But there were a lot of external people in my life, you know, family, friends as well. Like, you know, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? Your dad has a business. You have this, you have that. Why, why are you doing it? In fact, even my father had told me that, you know, he's going to use his clout. He's going to, I told him like very strictly that since I've seen him struggle, I've seen my father go through a lot to get to wherever he is. He's gone through a lot. He's had a really, uh, he struggled a lot and he has a story to tell me, right? So I, I really want to create my own story so that you know, if I have children, like I'm, let's, let's hope for the best. So if I do, I would love to tell them a story as well that, you know, it was not easy. I mean, uh, what if they ask me, like, how did you become a singer? How did you get to wherever you were? I don't want to be like, you know, my father helped me out. He had his clout and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I just thought that I wanted to create my own story. I want to create my own uh, uh, identity. So it was not easy. Initially, when I was performing, I used to do a lot of these. Uh, uh, have you guys heard of Puja Pandals in Kolkata? And anyone of you are familiar with that? Yeah. So I performed in those places as well. I've performed on the roads as well. I've performed uh, for 2,000, 3,000 rupees as well because I wanted to see the stuff. I wanted to see what everyone goes through. What's happening nowadays is most of the artists that are coming and they, have a, they come with a lot of money. They invest a lot of money. I have the money. My dad has it. But I never wanted to do that because I feel everything is a ground up process. Whatever, no matter whatever you guys are trying to achieve, whether you guys want to be an engineer, whether you guys want to be a musician, I think uh, this boy here, he wants to be a sound engineer as well. He's, he's into that as well. So whatever, whatever is it that you want to do, I think it's always a ground up thing. So I think these small shows that I did, it really taught me the, it, it, it taught me the most actually. I think the shows that I'm doing now, it's fine. I mean, there is sound is sorted out, everything, I have a management in place. So everything is sorted out, it's very easy. But there was a time I was managing everything myself. The show, the band, the politics, and the issues that go with it. So I started performing, I came back from Cardiff, I got my band sorted out. And uh, we call this band the Bombay Gramophone Company. Initially, that was my band. And Bombay Gramophone, because we are giving credit to Bombay, because we were covering a lot of Bollywood music. So I thought, like, yeah, let's go with that name. Let's see what happens. We started to make a name. People, re a lot of people jeered me as well. You know, what are you doing? You know, those people were always there. So I honestly felt bad, felt dejected. There were times where I was really depressed. I was really low. I was like, they've not even heard me sing. They don't even know what I do. Why are they commenting on my, my work? They have no idea. They're, they're not musicians. None of them are. So I felt that, you know, I felt really dejected, really low. And so I do this, and I do this even now, whenever I'm down. I don't know how you guys cope with the depression or getting low. I mean, it's, it's, it's part and parcel of uh, being a public figure, being an artist, I feel. I think you have to go through this. It's almost like a bipolar life I'm leading right now. That today I'm absolutely happy, tomorrow might be a completely different day. I'm happy because you guys are amazing, man. And City Bhopal, you guys are beautiful. Hope you guys are. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the, so, so basically, I, 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 whenever I'm down, this is what I do. I look into the mirror. Sometimes I also have my guitar strapped in. I look at myself and I'm like, Arjun, do you believe? Do you believe you can get somewhere? Do you believe you can do something great in music? Do you believe you have something in you? you know, do you believe in yourself? And the answer is yes, all the time. So my belief system is still there and working very hard. And I want to represent India on the world stage someday. So I'm working very hard on that. I'm giving my 200% to that. And uh, hopefully, God willing, next time I'm here, I won't have to introduce myself as, as much as I had to this time. So yeah, so I want to address all of you people and tell you, like, you guys are the future. All of us are the future of India. I mean, I feel a lot can come out of this country. 
it being the youngest populated country in the world. You guys, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. Like around 60% or so people in this country are under 35 year old, which is insanity. Almost every second, third person you'll be talking to, will be relate, you, you'll be able to relate with that person. So imagine if everyone gets together, everyone works towards their priorities, works really hard on whatever is it that you guys are trying to achieve, wherever you guys are trying to go. I feel it's imperative that you still dig, dig deep into your mind, you understand yourself, and then finally, make a plan then finally you understand what you are what you're made of and then make a plan make a plan a stick with that don't don't falter don't let anyone falter you i, I think that's really important and uh, in my own career as well there were a lot of people uh, negative they used to come and tell tell me like you know what which how you know things like that but I, I i used to feel bad i used to go up to my dad and i used to tell him like you know why are people like this why are they not even listening to me why are they not listening to me sing like you know why are they talking before even anything has happened Right, you know? So as, as I think uh, Gaurav rightfully said that un until you're a star, no one really knows who you are, right? So it was going that way. I'm working on that. And I really want, I want to become the best of, my, best of myself. And I'm working really hard on that. But it was hard at that time. I was dejected, depressed. So I used to go up to my dad. And this line my dad told me, and I really firmly believe in this line. So whenever you feel low, whenever you feel down, draw such a huge line in front of everyone. Like, you know, work so hard on yourself get to such a great level that everyone around you looks so small. You know, you, you, you become the greatest version of yourself. So everyone around you are going to look so small. They'll ha you'll have to, the universe will give you a chance then. The universe will give, there are signs, right? So the universe will give you a chance. One day you'll find your chance. And I honestly feel that uh, through it all, you'll have to have an infinite amount of patience. And I'm not the most patient guy at all. I want everything to work out today. I want to be the best today. It does not work out like that. I con cannot control music labels, I cannot control the managers, I cannot control Mumbai, I cannot com control USA. But the music industry is huge, right? So I can work on myself and that's why I think initially when my parents allowed me to get into music, I was not the most disciplined guy before that. I used to sleep late, I used to go out, I used to, I mean, it's a good thing. It's really important that you do that as well. It's really important to socialize, it's really important to have fun in life. But I honestly felt that at that time, they allowed me only because they saw my dedication. I started working hard. And uh, I'm sure you guys know the word riyaz by any, any chance. It's like uh, vocal practice in Hindustani classical music. So I used to do my riyaz for around five, six hours a day, probably more than that. Now it's increased. Sometimes it's, because so, since I'm traveling, I'm doing shows, but I want to put more time to it. And I honestly feel that, uh, yeah, I mean, so they saw my dedication. I had almost forgotten everything. I started sacrificing almost everything around me. I started, uh, my friends were calling me every now and then, I was never available. I was always working, I still am, like, you know, uh, every, every, every time I was out with friends, I was probably, you call me around that time, I'd probably be like, you know, you'd be like, hey, Arun, how are you doing? I'd be like, hey, music. I was always talking music, sleeping music, eating music, pretty much music, I'm still the same, crazy that way. So, yeah, so I think that really, my parents really saw that in me, so they told me that, you know, go for it. And then things started happening. Now, finally, I have a, uh, my fans, uh, my fan base is increasing on Instagram and social media. And uh, it's, it's pretty much worldwide now. I have a fan, fan in India. So it's confined to not just in India. It has, uh, it's, there's Pakistan, there's UAE, there's UK, there's USA, there's Australia even. It goes down south as well. So it's, it's been a lot of hard work. It's been uh, a lot of long hours. Um, and I'm sure it's just been like four or five years in the industry for me. And uh, being a professional musician, and I'm sure there's a long way to go. But yeah, I won't be giving up anytime soon. I'm, uh, I'll be motivating myself, keeping that belief system systems really strong, and uh, and keep at it. Basically, no matter what you guys want to do, I urge all of you to not lose your patience, to give everything to it, and cr channelize everything in your craft, in your work. No matter whatever is whatever is that is it that you guys are trying to achieve in life, and don't listen to any external factors, external people. They don't mean anything. It's your plan. It's why you are unique, right? So stick with that. Keep believing in yourself. It's not going to be easy. I'm, I did not state the obvious because life is not easy. Life is not a bed of roses. And it was really hard for me as well. I'd gone through really dark times. And uh, I, can, I cannot really talk about everything here, but then yeah, it was not easy. I was, I've gone through really low times in my life. And it does not look like, you know, if you see my Instagram, oh God, he's performing, he's doing this, he's doing that. That's social media. You can't really tell what's happening in the, everyone's life. So every day was a challenge. Every day is a fight. I feel, and uh, so honestly, just the belief system, keep, uh, stick with it, be unique about yourself, understand why you're unique, and uh, yeah, just never give up, just keep at it. So with that, I would like to thank all of you, uh, yeah, and... <laughs>
I hope I was not too much. Yeah.